news has just come in that a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center tower. Had they said, you've got to go on Britain's Got Talent. Entirely yes. up to you, darling. Yes. It must have given you... <laughs> Did you like the way I said <laughs> that to you? Judge, I thought that was lovely. In New York, we can see the live pictures coming through there. At the moment, we don't have any idea about the number of casualties involved, but as you can see, it's obviously a major crash. Two planes crash into World Trade Center Tower in New York. Reports planes were hijacked just before attack. Minutes later, third crash at the Pentagon. Good afternoon. There have been a series of huge explosions in New York and at the Pentagon. The first explosion happened at five past two this afternoon. Over in New York, part of the South Tower has collapsed at the World Trade Center. We can see the shot there. The smoke is so intense now, stretching right over Manhattan. Where had you done your singing previously? Previously, I'd been in choirs, I'd been in school productions, karaoke's. You name it, I was on it. <laughs> and had people actually said, when they'd heard you sing karaoke, had they said, you've got to go on Britain's Got Talent or one of these shows? Well, they did mention it once or twice, but then, then I said to them, well, I'll have a go at it now. Welcome, Richard Attenborough. Thank you very much for coming in. Not at all. Thank you for your welcome. You've just written this book entirely yes. up to you, darling. Yes. It must have given you... <laughs> Did you like the way I said <laughs> that to you? I thought that was lovely. Play the line once more. <laughs> entirely up to you, darling. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> You've just been directed by Richard Attenborough. How good is that? <laughs> When do you get coffee breaks? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, you're on your feet all day. Do you Did get you a regular you manicure? I do, yes. I also get my fingers waxed. <laughs> Very metrosexual. I'm here in the middle of nowhere. Actually, I'm being a bit dramatic. I'm about half an hour outside Largs on the moors for International Rocket Week to see how these boys and their toys are going to fare. They're getting ready for launch. They're doing this for fun. Can you believe? Anyway, let's see how they're getting on. Because Superman here is a real traditional chisel jawed, yeah. almost 1950s quality yeah. to him. That's the there's a, there's a there's a kind of there's a pinch of desperate Dan in there. It's a cold Tuesday night, early on in January. It's a new year and of course everybody thinks about joining the gym. But, you know, here on the 5.30 show we're trying to investigate some alternative ways of getting fit, getting some exercise. And every Tuesday night this lacrosse team come down and play and they have asked me to join them for one session. This looks like some of the girls I used to play with. The position I used to play was point, which was literally probably about two metres away from a fearsome looking thing like that. And you got battered with uh, all the balls as they were coming into the goal. You were the last point of defence. I hope things have changed since then, or else I'll be going into work tomorrow with a black eye. <laughs> In my mind at school, I was much, much better at this. Yeah. Also, at the same time as the Fringe Festival and the International Festival, there is also the Book Festival running in Edinburgh. And today, I met up with Ian Rankin, the Rebus author, who's chairing the festival this year. You're doing quite a bit at the Book Festival that starts tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. I'm doing the opening event. I'm chairing the opening event with a special VIP mystery guest. I know, I won't even say I'm if not it's male or it female. I know. We don't know anything for and I've got, security I've got, reasons. That I've, always sounds good. I've actually got their name in my pocket here, but I'm not, you're not even allowed <laughs> to see that. Do you know you were on in Midsummer Murders yesterday? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing some research about you, and there you were, yes. popping up in that village where everybody gets bumped off. It's well, nice so to you see you. That's you spend your Sunday yeah, afternoon. Yeah. Now we know. You're respectable now, aren't you? 
Yeah, but I bet you were like living old... in the Essex countryside yeah. with a ride-on mower. I have a ride. How did you know I have a ride-on mower? Ooh, I'd like to say they... I have a team of researchers, but I don't. They're it's probably... me and Google. <laughs> Thirty quid, which champagne would you would you oh, pick? You do ask me the tough questions, don't you? You're not a cheap date. That's perfectly clear. <laughs> I was rather hoping you were a carver girl and after no, the I show. Am. Oh, I am. Now you tell me. All right then. <laughs> Michael Barrymore was Mr. Entertainment, dominating the Saturday night TV schedule for years. But his personal life became public news, and he moved to New Zealand to escape. Well, now he's back and returning to his first love of acting. The phrase that's used for both of you is beset by demons. I mean, that's that's fairly accurate, isn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't live my life beset by demons all the time, but I can get into a dark place, you know. Edward Scissorhands, eat your heart out. Well, do you know what Andrew's given me to take back to the studio? Yeah. It's a cattle prod, Stephen, yeah. for my male no, co-presenters who sit too close to me on the muck. sofa. Look at the steam it You off. and Jerry, if you get too close. More glitter, Rachel. Oh, physically, more glitter anymore. Oh. A good witch can never have enough glitter. I think I found a new look. Just gotta find the stage now. 